Flatwing master Joe Cordero is going to demonstrate how he ties a multi-feather flatwing. The techniques are basically the same as those used on a single wing flatwing, except this one has more layers. Joe's going to tie it on an Eagle Claw L253 in a 2 watt size. The L253 has really become the hook of choice for flat wing flies. It's important the hook be held very securely in your vise as a good deal of thread tension is going to be used during the tying process. 3 aught unithread in white is pretty tough stuff and works well for this fly. Start your thread on the hook shank, leaving a small space behind the eye. Take wraps all the way back to the point of the hook and cut off the tag. From a white bucktail, snip a small clump of the more hollow hairs found down at the base of the tail. Strip out the shorter hairs from the butt end. Joe calls these the rats. Work them around to form a tight bundle, then snip the butt ends off at an angle. Orient the snip butt ends like this, just in front of your tying thread. Make two tight pin traps, pulling down with authority on the second. Your tail should kick up like this. Now use your thumb to flatten the clump and spread it out. Take additional wraps to cover and secure the butts. This bucktail layer will help to support the flat wing hackles throughout their range of motion. From a neck cape, select a nice, relatively stiff stem feather and strip most of the fuzzies off. Lay the feather flat against the bucktail fan with the concave side facing up. Make open spiral wraps with your tying thread forward toward the eye. Stop wrapping at a distance back from the very front of the hook equal to the length of the hook point to the tip of the barb. Once you've established this location, which will be the back end of the head of the fly, take close wraps rearward and snip off the stem. Continue taking wraps back until the thread reaches the hook point. Now select a single white flat wing saddle hackle. Find the location where the stem diameter changes dramatically. Use your thumb as a marker. Snip the stem leaving about an eighth of an inch. Then strip the fuzzies off but hold on to them. Loosely dub them onto your tying thread. Then raise the thread to vertical and push the clump down to the hook, pulling the thread straight down as you go. Lay the feather on top of this fluffy pillow, dull side down, and take a single wrap over the top to secure it. The butt end of the stem should extend to about the front of the eye and the tip about an inch beyond that of the first tackle. Select a few strands of extra long pearl flashaboo. Although Joe pulls a bunch here, he's only going to use three on this fly. With a single turn of tying thread, secure the flashaboo to the top of the hook at the tie-in point. This time, select a yellow flatwing saddle hackle. Measure the feather so it's about an inch longer than the white feather beneath it. Snip the stem off at the proper length and strip an eighth inch of fuzzies off. These you don't have to keep. Once again, tie the feather, dull side down, flat against the feather beneath it using just a single thread wrap. Reorient the feathers if needed to keep them running flat and true. To add some flash, tie in five or six strands of silver flashaboo with a single wrap. The strands should extend about an inch beyond the yellow feather. Next, select the silver Dr. Blue saddle hackle. Measure and tie it in just as you did with the yellow hackle. Grab three or so strands of blue flashaboo and tie them in like you did with the silver. Okay, I gotta stop here for a second. I know this whole assemblage looks rather loose and a little sketchy and it's going to get worse before it gets better. 
but trust me, it'll all work out in the end. Here goes. Snip about 8 to 10 inches of silver Bill's body braid free from the spool. Secure it to the side of the hook with a single wrap of thread. Then pull the braid to shorten the tag and bring it to the underside of the hook. Now squeeze the whole mess hard between your thumb and index finger and make three or four tight collecting wraps forward before snipping off all the butt ends at once. Continue taking wraps forward to just behind the eye, then switch directions and head rearward. While holding the whole rear assemblage really tight between your thumb and index finger, continue wrapping rearward with a lot of pressure. This is where the whole flat wing part of the fly really comes together and gets locked into the correct orientation. Now take wraps forward with your tying thread to form a smooth foundation for the body braid. Get hold of the body braid and start taking overlapping wraps up the hook shank to where the head of the fly is going to begin. Take wraps of tying thread to create a nice smooth ramp between the hook shank and the body braid. Snip a small clump of white bucktail from the prime area just below the tip of the tail. As before, strip out the rats, organize the bundle, and snip the butts off at an angle. Tie them in on the underside of the hook as you did the bucktail at the back of the fly and spread them out with your thumb. Then cover the butts with some nice tight wraps. Repeat the exact same process with a clump of chartreuse bucktail, but tie this clump to the top of the hook. Repeat the process again, but with a smaller clump of blue bucktail. Get a hold of seven long peacock curls. That's seven, no more, no less. Measure them so they extend about an inch beyond the longest feather and snip the butts off at the point you marked. Tie the butts on top of the head of the fly. For cheeks, snip a small clump of lavender bucktail, but this time cut the butts off square. Tie half the clump on one side of the fly and the other half on the opposite side. Select two matching jungle cock eyes and drag them across your tying wax to seal splits and make tie-in easier. Secure one to each side with a single turn of tying thread. Then take a few more turns to further anchor them both. Carefully snip the butts off close. Then take wraps to clean up and cover the head of the fly. Use two five or six turn whip finishes to secure the tying thread. Then apply a liberal coating of hard as nails. Joe uses the good stuff. And there you go, one beautiful and extremely effective multi-wing flat wing fly.